general these days, I sleep pretty well, but it hasn't always been that way. I've been through periods of my life where I would lie awake until three in the morning, get just a few hours sleep and spend all day feeling jet lagged without the fun travel bit. So we need at least six hours sleep a night to feel our best. And most of us need a bit more than that. The ideal for me is around eight hours, but some adults need more like nine. Um, generally anything between seven and nine is good. But if you're routinely getting less sleep than you need, or if your sleep is being frequently disrupted, you're not gonna feel your best. As we age, sleep becomes a big part of our overall health, even lowering our risk of serious conditions like heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and high blood pressure, while also supporting our brain and our mental health. When you don't get enough sleep, knowing that just makes it so much worse because then you're lying there fretting about being awake, which keeps you awake and it's a vicious cycle. So over the years, I've identified four things that can mean the difference for me between a good and bad night's sleep, including this little set of earplugs that have been a game changer. So let me talk you through my four essentials for sleep. One of my biggest obstacles to a good night's sleep in recent years has been sleep disturbance. In a house of four, including two teenagers, plus we have Daisy Dog, someone getting up to the bathroom in the night, a fox outside, a car, an alarm. You know, if a noise startles me as I'm nodding off or if it wakes me from sleep, it just gives me anxiety and then I'm wide awake. So I was actually really struggling to get to sleep and then also to stay asleep. And that's where these earplugs have come in. Um, I've used other foam plugs in the past and found them uncomfortable and um, that they also didn't stay in my ears. But these have been great. They're called loop earplugs and they're roughly £17.95 on Amazon in the UK and $19.95 in the US. So I'm going to link to both listings in the description below. So these are made of soft silicon and they're extremely lightweight and they just sort of slip into your ear and then embed themselves in there. So you've got these loops on the outside, so they're easy to remove again. And uh, they come with this little carry case and uh, there's four replaceable tips. So provided you don't lose them, they should last a long time. I've been using these for a few months now and it is making such a big difference. So I should flag to avoid any confusion, Loop sell two types of earplugs. These are their quiet earplugs. And they also sell something called experience earplugs. Uh, the quiet ones are supposed to reduce noise by 25 decibels, while the experience ones are designed to be worn at a concert or a really noisy environment, and they reduce uh, noise by about 20 decibels. Okay, so we're in our little um, at-home sound booth, and I'm going to do a very unscientific experiment here. I'm going to put my nighttime, my quiet earplugs in, Play some loud music. It's my channel music. We just wanted to avoid any copyright issues. Play the music and I'll take them out and see if we can. So basically with these in, I can hear the music. It is uh, muffled, but I'm still hearing um, every beat. But um, without the earplugs, it's very loud. So the difference is it's cutting out enough of the noise at night to help you just zone out a little bit more, but you are still hearing what's going on around you. So my mind before was much more active because I was tuned into the noises around me at night. Whereas when I put the earplugs in, these are comfortable enough not to notice them. They're snug enough fit to really help you zone out and I'm getting to sleep so much more quickly. I would say probably within 10 minutes most night, whereas before it would have been at least half an hour. And um, I think they're helping me stay asleep for longer as well. So these have been a bit of a revelation and they are one of the four things that make a big difference to how much sleep I get. At number two, and this won't surprise you, it's caffeine. 
So at one stage in my life when I was working early shifts for a news agency in my 20s, I was getting only three or four hours of sleep a night, sometimes less because I had to get up at 5 a.m. and it was taking me hours to get to sleep. And my mind was just racing and I was lying there feeling really anxious. And I went to the doctor and um, they put me on beta blockers at first, which sort of helped, but left me feeling really washed out, you know, not a good idea. So I went back and then they put me on antidepressants and that again improved things. I was able to get to sleep a little bit quicker I then had a light bulb moment where I thought, maybe it's the coffee. I was drinking four or five cups of coffee over the day and then wondering why I couldn't sleep at night. And I soon realized that I could only really afford to have one cup of caffeinated coffee first thing in the morning around 7 a.m. And then I have a decaf about 8.30. And the decaf will likely have a small amount of caffeine in it. Um, and that's really as much as I can take for the day. Any caffeine for me after 10 a.m. will affect my sleep for sure. So although we know caffeine keeps us awake, if you're struggling to sleep and you're having several cups, even just in the morning, you might want to rethink that. Um, the same goes, of course, for Cokes, Diet Cokes, tea, iced tea, green tea. You have to be really careful, particularly if you're sensitive to caffeine like me. The third thing on my list of things that keep me awake at night is sweets or candy. You know, something with a lot of sugar, particularly anything with color in it. I, I just need to look at an M&M and I'd be up all night. It's a disaster for sleep. Not necessarily a baked dessert, uh, you know, at 7 p.m. or something like that, but ice cream around that time could tip me. A chocolate bar, uh, definitely sweets with any coloring, as I've said. Uh, a glass of lemonade would be enough probably to keep me awake at night, drunk in the evening. So if you're struggling to get to sleep, think back or keep a diary of what you eat and see if you can spot a pattern. The fourth thing that keeps me awake at night is overly salty food. So if I eat a ready meal or a takeaway dinner that's heavily salted, that would be enough to keep me awake for hours. So I get a thirst that's hard to quench and somehow it just ignites my nervous system and I can't sleep. So it can be amazing just what kind of food keeps us awake at night. And maybe with the ready meals and takeaways, there could be coloring in it or preservatives, that kind of thing. But I do think that the salt plays its part as well. So now I have to watch what I eat and drink, particularly later in the day. And it does make a big difference to the quality of sleep that I get. And when I add in these little loop earplugs on top, in the main, I'm getting a long, good quality night's rest. So I hope you found these tips helpful. If you have something that helps you get to sleep more quickly or stay asleep, you know, let me know what works for you. Maybe you've tried other earplugs that are just as good. I do love to hear from you. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, then if you hit subscribe, you'll be able to watch my future ones as soon as they're published. Next time, I'm gonna be reviewing the Hydra facial treatment, which I'm gonna try out for the first time this week. So I'm looking forward to that. Keep an eye out for that one and I'll see you very soon.